Good morning, it's Friday, February 18th, and looks to be about 10 o'clock in the morning. Just got back from a bike ride. Yesterday evening, uh, we got all the electrical connections completed on this side of the bus. And I was waiting for some daylight, so they'll actually produce some voltage so I can verify polarity on these two before I plug them in. And for that, I'm using my digital voltmeter. They're on DC scale. And set for hundreds of volts. Let's see which way the polarity is. All right. Plug the positive into this one, which I think is positive. Okay. Then we're going to put the negative into this one. Mm. And we got 110 volts DC positively uh, flowing. So this is the negative and this is the positive. So let's double check what we got going on here. There's our positive which is this wire and this wire is this which is a female plastic is what I call that and that will plug into that so that's correct let's hook them up okay now that's that's how that looks okay everything's tucked up nice and neat in there I may put a couple tie wraps Maybe not. It looks like it's pretty stable, just how it is. So all I gotta do now is put the cover on this box. And I think I'm done here, underneath here anyway. The rest of the work is gonna be up above. Let me turn this guy off. I'll show you what I mean about that. Right here, I left myself excess wire to tuck up in there. And I'm going to put all this back together with my 12 volt power ports, one on each side. This is my two solar inputs here. And then I got to go on the roof and attach the clamps. I think I left them out here. Look at those things, huh? These guys from the master car. like that's the part number. These are half inch cable clamps or I just can't remember what the other name is. But they got a hole big enough for quarter inch screws which works perfectly. All done. All the clamps, all the tie wraps are in place. For these I just drilled the aluminum and put tie wraps through the holes. And uh, like on the passenger side, I just went every other screw to put the clamps. And between those, I put tie wraps and I positioned the tie wrap where it sits, where the screw is, just for a little bit of extra protection. Not that it needs it, this wire is really tough. All right, so, Here's how I did this, if I didn't catch it on the previous video. So, the uh, surfaces are uneven here by about a sixteenth. So I use washers up underneath there on the back two screws, just so this would sit level and not try to bend this and crack it. And uh, this is Gorilla Construction Adhesive cleaned up with mineral spirits and uh, paper towels. Uh, what else? I put the Gorilla Construction adhesive underneath the washer so that there's that on both sides and it's like super well sealed. So I've got no concerns with that. I gotta get some pliers up here and give this a little bit more tightness. Can't grip this any better with my little stubby fingers. 
but uh, those are going to be watertight, airtight probably. I just swept off the roof. I see I missed a little spot. There's some crud on that marker light right there. But uh, next order of operation here, I'm going to remove these supports. What I'd like to do is cut off the corners so they're not so lethal. And uh, what else? I'm going to drill these every six inches or so so I can adjust the height of my panels if I have a need to do so. I have a feeling I won't, but uh, that's what I'm going to do. And I've got enough material to make three more. So we'll be able to support these panels at both anchor points up there and here, because this is a little in a high wind situation. I don't like how that would uh, perform. So we'll do that. Then we're going to go to the store, got to buy some starting fluid ether and get the beads set on my tires. I'm going to start working on that next. All right, so we're not getting sun right now because of the clouds, but at this very moment, we're getting about 500 watts. Uh, I've turned on the front AC mini split and uh, that's drawn probably around 10 amps on the 120 volt side right now. And uh, I was getting about five amps from the solar let me double check those readings, get right back to you here. All right, so I'm getting about 18 or so, 20 amps maybe, of DC power um, going into the battery and around 30 amps of DC uh, coming um, through the shunt, which means it's actually about 10 amps coming from the battery and 20 amps coming from, that eh, can't be right. Oh yeah, that's at the 24 volts. So we're looking at about 30 amps. Got to double check. I'm trying to remember how I wired up the battery, how the current will flow through the shunt because the shunt is not gonna see, I don't believe the shunt is gonna see the current that is um, coming from the solar charger to run the bus because I, I think that's connected to the common negative which is after the shunt so that way the shunt will read whatever goes into the battery from the solar charger but it won't see what's coming um, out of the solar charger. That I've got to check the solar charger myself. So, I mean, if I had one of those really nice display panels, I'd see all this at once, but I don't think I need to spend the extra money and aggravation to install all that high tech stuff. My intent is that this system will run itself and I could check it periodically to see the health of it. And once I learn how much I could use, um, then I just go by gut feel and check it every once in a while. All right, looks like the sun's coming out strong. Let me double check what the, the solar's collecting. All right, I buttoned up everything here. A moment ago, we were getting over 1600 watts out of the solar, which is great. Um, and uh, that's enough power. I got the AC running up front and it was still charging the battery at about 20 amps um, on the 24 volt side. So uh, with the clouds coming and going, there's power alternately coming in and then going out of the battery as the uh, solar panels effectiveness varies. Wonder if we can feel any heat here. Just the tiniest bit of warmth on this thing. almost undetectable a little bit warmer on the right side fabulous so the fans are running on the inverter because that's 
working pretty hard. I'm pulling, I'm gonna guess here, about 1200 watts. So uh, you see my little computer fan there, that's drawing cool air from inside the bus and depositing it right there at the base of the inverter to give it some fresh air in this enclosed space here. Let's double check the, uh, the load on the inverter. Yep, uh, it's around 1100 watts uh, running right now. The front air conditioner, and I don't know if the refrigerator is running right now, but uh, that would be the only two AC loads I've got. And um, everything's working great. Loving it, man. I'm really excited. Everything is working as exactly perfectly as I had hoped and planned.